What is going on guys and girls? My name is James Hall, thanks to you. Welcome back today to Roblox. How are you everyone? Welcome back, welcome back. Today, finally, as promised, yes, we are going to be doing our updated Bee Swarm tips and tricks video. However, we're actually going to be doing this one a little bit different. So basically, I tried to record this video yesterday. I noted down a bunch of points that I wanted to talk about. I think well over 20 different topics. And I tried to record it, right? And I pretty much got up to point like number eight. And I'd already been recording and talking for well over half an hour. So I think the video would have been too long, too much information all at once. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be splitting this tips and tricks video into two separate videos. So yeah, this one you're watching right now, I think it's going to be called uh, Tips and Tricks for Noobs. And then the video that's going to be coming up shortly on the channel, maybe the next day, is going to be called Tips and Tricks for Pros. So by noobs and pros, I don't necessarily mean this video is going to be for someone with one single B. What I mean by that is this video is going to contain some more of the, I guess, slightly more obvious stuff. However, I do think that there is still going to be some really useful information inside this video of just how how to play Bee Swarm a little bit more efficiently. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing some more of the basic stuff in this one, maybe for kind of like beginners and intermediate players. And then in the next video, we're going to be going for more end game and advanced kind of stuff. So yeah, I really hope that these videos are going to be useful and hopefully there's going to be something for everyone over the course of those two videos. So yeah, as I mentioned today, we're going to be starting with the super duper basic stuff. Uh, I've got a bunch of points that I want to talk about and I guess we should get started straight away with something that I guess is pretty simple. However, hive slots. There you go. So when you join into the game, you pretty much stand right here and you have six hive slots to choose from. Now, obviously, this isn't always possible if you are playing in public servers. However, just a very, very quick recommendation. I would always try and get this far right slot if possible. So three, two, one, claim the hive. Um, yeah, this is quite simply because it is close to the red cannon. Literally, that's the only reason. And if you are doing things like quests, if you're doing things like field boosts, all that good stuff, you are going to want to get to the red cannon as soon as possible because the red cannon is pretty much the best way of getting around the map quickly. Um, so yeah, if you can't get this slot, go and grab this slot. But yeah, the end slot, super duper far away from the cannon. And if you're doing field boosts, you're going to waste a bit of time running back and forth. Next up, we have probably one of my favorite tips from this video. And this is something that I have encouraged for so, so long. And I think we actually mentioned this in our previous tips and tricks video. So the reason why I wanted to do an updated one is because obviously we have a lot more features and stuff in Beast Swarm now. However, this was a point that we talked about the last time and I like to call it the bug run. <laughs> so yeah, the bug run is something that I really do swear by. I think it's one of the most useful things you can do in Beast Swarm. And yes, it quite simply means you go and take down all of the bugs. Now, quite simply, what I'm doing here, boom, is I'm waiting for a baby love token because when I grab that bad boy, it is actually boosting up our loot luck by 50%. Now, when it comes to mobs and dropping items, loot luck does play a really, really big part in this. And look at that. I've got a boosted up loot luck. And what did we get? Ta-da! We got a micro converter, one royal jelly, one ticket, 10 sunflower seeds, and a bit of honey. So I tend to find from playing that if I actually get lucky with the mob drops, I tend to get micro converters. Now we're going to talk way more about micro converters in the pro tips video, but it's a very, very useful item to have. And the higher the loot luck you have, the more chance you've got of gaining better items. So essentially what you're seeing now in the background is my other route to do the bug run. So yes, it does depend on which quest you've got. However, right now I know that I've got another werewolf to wait for, so it doesn't really matter. So what I've done is I always start at the top, I go to the werewolf, I go to the pine tree field, I take the two mantis out, I go here to the rose field, I take out the two scorpions, and then I go and fly over to the strawberry. So what we're doing now is we're going to wipe the entire map clear of bugs. So once I've gone to the strawberry, I jump down here into the, um, the mushroom field, I go and grab the items, and then I jump back up here and then I go to the spider field. Now, the thing is, you could actually technically wait and use your baby love tokens. However, to be honest, I kind of just like to do it all in one go. So once again there, we actually got a field dice. We got a pineapple. We got another ticket. Let's see what we get here from the rhino beetles. We get a few blueberries. Fantastic. We're going to go and jump back down here to the rhino beetle 
the single rider beetle. We're going to go and farm him another blueberry. We're going to jump up here. Uh, on this little flower, we're going to go to the clover field. We've got a rhino beetle and a ladybug just chilling. Boom. We're going to get those bad boys. Another ticket, another micro converter, another blueberry. And then finally, to finish the bug run, we're going to use the slingshot. <laughs> We're going to try and use the slingshot. Yeah, the slingshot's sometimes a bit of a troll. There we go. <laughs> and we are going to finally finish off the bug run inside of the pineapple patch with the rhino beetle and the single mantis. So basically what I'm saying here is that yes, you are going to want to do things efficiently in terms of what quests you have in the background. However, if you have a situation like this, you're just going to have to kind of wait. So now that I know, basically, I can do that exact same bug run three more times. Uh, to get that second werewolf and every single time I do it I'm gonna get a bunch of free items for pretty much doing absolutely nothing. Okay so next up we have quite simply the repeatable quests which are found in and around the map. Um, so yeah these obviously depend on if you have completed the main storylines however you have something like brown bear uh, and you have black bear and you have polar bear and then slightly more advanced you have the bucko and the riley bee. So let's just cover the basic ones here for this video um, but you can see here that we have a quest to grab for Black Bear. So he wants 2 million from the Sunflower. And then if we go and ride over here to Brown Bear, he's probably going to have a smaller amount from a different field. And yeah, basically what? Within like a couple of minutes, we have now completed both of those daily uh, quests. Well, repeatable quests. So what's he going to give us? He's going to give us a ticket and 50 treats for pretty much doing nothing. And then we're going to go and fly over to the Brown Bear and we're going to go and hand in as well. So the Black Bear respawns once every hour. The Brown Bear, I think, is once every four hours. There we go. Another two tickets, 100 uh, treats and one royal jelly. Every four hours for the black brown bear, every one hour for the black bear, every time the mobs respawn for the polar bear. So keep an eye on those. Try and do them as best as you possibly can because the rewards really do stack up. It's an amazing way of getting magic beans and tickets and other valuable items. Okay, next up we have the memory match and the little technique that I use in order to obtain items. So in terms of the memory match, there are four of these available on the map. The first one, which is the cheapest, is down by the pineapple shop. Uh, the second one is inside the sprinkler shop. The third one, which I think is probably the most well hidden one, you have to be able to go into the 30B zone and you can only actually access this at nighttime when these moons are glowing. It is right up there on the bear's head. Uh, this one is a good one because it does give you micro converters quite frequently. And then the final one over there... Uh, next to the spirit bear is the extreme one which i think is the most expensive um but yeah the extreme one and the one inside the 30b zone they have the longest respawns i think it's about eight hours uh the sprinkler shot one has the second longest and this one down here is the quickest one to respawn i think this is once every two hours so i would recommend trying to do these as often as possible and it's quite simply just a really nice way to gain extra items now in terms of technique everyone's kind of got their own technique uh, but what i try and do quite simply is i try and get the most amount of items for my honey spent um so i like to do a dag so i go royal jelly sunflower seeds field dice royal jelly so i know for instantly i've got one match there strawberries don't match with anything jelly beans don't match with anything but strawberries where were strawberries there they were boom okay and there we go we got two matches so not the greatest pulls but we did manage to get two matches from one dispenser sometimes you'll get two sometimes you'll get three if you're very lucky you'll get four but i find that if you go specifically chasing for items which is super duper tempting you might actually not get very much Next up, we have the daily dispensers. So there are a bunch of these all over the map. Uh, the one thing that I would recommend is to join the Beast Swarm Simulator Club, uh, which is linked in the description of the game on the Roblox page. It's just the click. Uh, but basically, it does allow you to use a couple of these dispensers. Um, so yeah, the main ones of interest are up by the Pineapple Shop. There is a Treats Dispenser. Inside the Blue HQ, there is a Blueberry. Inside the Red, well, to the side of the Red, there is a Strawberry. Um, and then we also have the glue dispenser inside the um the gummy bear lair which we'll come to in just a second uh, but i would always recommend hitting these guys as quickly and as often as you can also don't forget your ant challenges uh you can have a maximum of 10 stacked up at once so if you do need one like this boom grab one of those stack it up to 10 it's always useful if you need them. another really nice way of just gaining a couple of extra tickets for pretty much doing nothing is to use your honey storm so i feel like this is pretty much a forgotten feature um and it is actually very very useful because when we 
summon a honey storm, it does have a chance to spawn tickets. So what I like to do is I like to summon it and I like to come here into the blue flower field. This is quite simply because it's quite a long field. Um, so it gives you a lot of space to actually get a ticket or two. So of course, because we've done this on camera, we've not got a single ticket spawn, <laughs> which is great, fantastic. And then we've got a windmill and all that stuff is spawning all over the place, but you will find tickets spawn from your honey storms. So on that single occasion, we got absolutely nothing. But keep your eyes peeled, use your jumping abilities, that kind of stuff. Most of the time you can get two or three tickets from a honey storm, pretty much doing nothing. Oh yeah, and in terms of getting your daily glues, this is something that a few people might not know, um, is that you can actually get into the gummy bear lair from jumping on the gummy bee's head here and using a gumdrop. So do keep in mind that you do need the hot shot or above goo badge in order to activate this. If you don't have hot shot or above, it's not going to work. However, quite simply, just stand on the gummy bee's head, use a gumdrop. I've used a micro converter by accident. That's really annoying. <laughs> but yeah, you've got the daily glue dispenser. Uh, this scales with your badge but even if you're gaining like two glue it is well worth doing that once every day because they do really stack up well seeing as it's gone night time this is the perfect time to talk about the vicious bee so yeah, this is just some very basic information. Uh, there are some people that don't quite realize that the Vicious Bee only ever spawns in certain fields. So don't waste your time looking through all of the random fields in order to actually try and find the spike. Uh, all you need to do is check a certain amount of fields. So what I like to do, we can actually see it there in the mountaintop, but the fields that the Vicious Bee spawn in are the Clover Field, the Spider Field, the Rose Field, the Cactus Field, the Mountaintop Field, and the Pepper Patch. So those fields spawn at the Vicious Bee. They do not spawn in any of the other fields, so don't waste your time going to look for them. But what I do is I always try and do the Vicious Bee whenever I possibly can. And now it is much more of a bonus to do the Vicious Bee because every 24 hours when you take down the Vicious Bee, you do gain an extra daily stinger bonus. So for example here, I think this is the first one we've taken down in 24 hours. I could be wrong. But let's go and take a little look. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So we gain three stingers from taking down the Vicious Bee. And we also gain an extra five stingers once per day as a daily bonus. So stingers are very useful. One, obviously, for crafting items. Two, for unlocking the Vicious Bee. And three, for boosting your attack for things like the Coconut Crab. We'll come to stuff like the Coconut Crab, though, in the next video. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if I can't take down the Vicious Bee? All that kind of stuff. Well, basically, this is kind of like a private server versus public server debate. Um, so there are some benefits of playing on a private server. We'll go into more of those next episode for what their uses are. But essentially, a private server is very useful for taking things like the Ant Challenge, the Coconut Crab, uh, and maybe also for gaining uh, sparkle tokens from the Fireflies. Uh, but there are huge benefits to playing on public servers, and it's simply because there are other players in and around uh, to play with. So if you do play on public servers, uh, always kind of check which type of players are in and around you. If you are someone that's more advanced, make sure that you help lower level players with things like Vicious Bee and Windy Bee, share the wealth around, things like Sprouts, you know, make sure you try and help them because if everyone helps each other, then everyone improves. Uh, alternatively, if you're a lower level player, maybe try and find a public server where there are some slightly higher level players. That way, if something like Vicious Bee does spawn, then you're gonna have an extra player or two to help you take it down. Okay, this is a bit of a side note. I did want to take uh, and talk about the Windy Bee next episode because I feel like it's much more of an end game type bee. However, you do have the wild Windy Bee spawning in every single public server. So if you are specifically trying to hunt for wild Windy Bees, I would kind of recommend doing this on a public server. It's just quite simply because there are more people playing. There are more people maybe donating to the Wind Shrine, handing in quests, all that good stuff. Um, so, ooh, side note. Always try and do the sparkles. <laughs> They're actually much bigger now. So if you see them in the field, make sure you go and tap them. Uh, you can get these in the sunflower field. You can get these. Oh my goodness, there's more. Dude, they're all happening at once. Yeah, sunflower has a face. The bubble blower has a face. Uh, the pumpkin has a face. And the pineapple has a face. So yeah, if you see a face, they probably spawn some of these bad boys. And they're really good. Free items. But yeah, anyway. If you want to play in a public server, you've got a higher chance, I think, of getting a Windy Bee. Um, so even if you're not a super duper high level player, you, the Windy Bee will most likely spawn at a lower level and you might be able to get a Cloud Vial or two. This is kind of slightly an irrelevant point, I think, but I guess it might be useful to some extent, is that maybe you might come across a Sprout 
which you're not able to take down yourself. So maybe there's not too many people in the field. You're kind of thinking, oh, geez, what am I going to do? Well, a tiny little top tip is if you have a cloud vial, you can just pop it inside the field and the cloud vial will actually harvest the sprout for you. Um, so this is just a really nice way of maybe getting a bit of help with a sprout if no one else wants to help you. I wouldn't necessarily do this on like green ones. I would maybe do them on rares or aboves. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they do really take down the sprouts pretty quick. And it's just kind of a nice way of uh, getting a bit of extra help as you do it. So the only way that you're going to get cloud vials is by taking down the windy bee. But you might be able to do the first couple of levels if you're a lower level player. Um, but yeah, if there is a windy bee, always try and do it. Try and help out. And the thing is, is that everyone's drops on the windy bee are unique. So there is no chance of anyone stealing your drops. It drops unique items per player. So it's always worth jumping in and trying to take down the windy bee. A side note here for literally what we've just done, if you do see sprouts pop up in a field, make sure you do them. Even if it's a green one, sometimes it's so tempting to just be like, ah, forget about it, it doesn't matter. And to be honest, even myself, if I'm recording a video and a random green sprout pops up, I tend not to actually go and get it. That's quite simply because we're just recording a video and maybe we're doing something else. However, if I'm just playing and ground grinding, if there's a sprout that pops up, it doesn't even matter if it's green, I will always go and get it because even if it's like single items, that we're getting they all add up and the more items you have the more chance you've got of making cooler items the more stuff you've got for the blender the more stuff you've got to feed to your bees so yeah even if it's a green sprout make sure you go and do it if it's a rare sprout or an epic sprout whatever always do your sprouts everything adds up in this game so I've got a couple more quick points here just for this particular episode, um, but I feel like this is one that people don't tend to pay too much attention to, and it is the badges. Um, so yeah, the badges are actually amazing. You know, people are so hyped up about getting all the gifted bees and that kind of stuff. People tend to forget about the badges, and in truth, working your way through the badges is just, if not more useful than making your bees gifted. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand not everyone's going to have like Grandmaster in every field. I get that. But if you can keep an eye on your badges and try and time your badges with what quests you're doing, uh, they are really, really useful to try and level up. So, I mean, it kind of depends what you're doing. But obviously something like field boosters are very, very useful for this. The field boosters now respawn once every hour. So you've got one inside the blue, one inside the red, one on top of the mountain. Um, so yeah, make sure you hit them. Why not? They, they're there to help. They boost up your fields. Always very, very useful keep an eye on your badges see if you can make some progress with these because those extra percentages over time they really do add up once again also side note in terms of boosts and stuff like that yes the field boosters are useful but also keep your eyes on the codes that do get released occasionally by on it oh so good example <laughs> i've just been randomly playing and there's a green sprout i mean it's a green sprout in the pineapple patch the pineapple patch is a bit annoying because it's really really big but i'm still gonna do it anyway even if i can get like what 10 extra pineapples or some royal jelly or something it really does help but yeah anyway what i was saying is keep your eye on the codes uh, the best way you can do that is by subscribing to the channel <laughs> <laughs> because we do cover the codes every time they come out. Uh, but yeah, they do have good boosts and stuff. Always try and make use of the field boosters inside those codes. Don't just claim them for the free items. Try and use every boost you possibly can if you have the time because it's just the best way to do it, I guess. It's efficient, you know what I mean? Also, another super duper random note, which believe it or not, some people don't actually know this. <laughs> It's kind of kind of tricky to believe, but yeah, it's true. Like, I, I guess it's not the most obvious thing in the world, but when you actually go to a dispenser machine, if, for example, you want to buy some treats, um, you could buy, like, you know, a single treat each time. <laughs> or if you click on the arrows, you can actually scroll through to increase the amounts that you buy. So, you know, it goes from one treat here, it goes to then 10 treats, it goes to then 100 treats, it goes to then 1,000 treats, it then goes 10,000 treats, you know, and then it goes to 100,000 treats. Uh, so, yeah, basically, you can use this for all of the machines. Now, in terms of the machines, they do start off low and then they cap at a certain figure. So the first time you purchase stuff from a certain machine, they will be cheaper. And then over time, they will cap out at a higher figure. Um, so it is actually worth if you've never bought anything from, for example, the Royal Jelly. Take a look at it. See what they're like. Because they do start off cheap, but then they do go up a little bit more. But yeah, you can use the arrows to buy bigger quantities. Don't just stand there and click it like 10,000 times. <laughs> that will be such a waste of time. And then finally, the last and the most debatable point here from the Tips for Noobs video. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, this is more of the obvious stuff, but quite simply, 
This is a question that I guess asked, like asked all the time. It is, what do I spend my star tree on? Now, this is a really, really difficult question to ask because there is really no wrong answer when it comes to this. However, if you do get your first or your second star tree from questing, always use it on one of the event bees first. So, the thing is, like the the regular bees, the the you know the rares, the um, the legendaries, the epics, those can technically go gifted by themselves if you feed them some of the fruits. However, that will never ever happen when you are leveling up the event bees. So first piece of advice is always use it on the event bees, depending on which event bees you have. Now you may be wondering which one should I use it on? Well, that's kind of a tricky question because all of them have their own abilities, and in fact, every single gifted bee has an incredible gifted ability. Um, but if you want my personal opinion, I guess, it's difficult to pick between the Photon Bee, uh, which gives you 5% uh, instant conversion, very nice, the Gummy Bee, which gives you 5% honey per pollen boost, and the Crimson and the Cobalt, which give you 10% each blue or red, and then you've also got the Bear Bee, which is 5% pollen. <laughs> so of course not everyone might have the Bear Bee, this is like a Robux purchase, I think, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would kind of go with one of those, Perhaps either the gummy bee or the photon bee. It's difficult though, really it is. Every single vicious, uh, every single gifted bee has a really good ability pretty much. Um, so yeah, kind of tough. And yeah, just a side note, I guess, as well, about getting gifted bees. It is kind of tricky. Um, so what you can do is, one, you can just use royal jelly and kind of hope. <laughs> Believe me, we've been there, and it takes a very long time. Or you can feed um, treats to them. So what I would do is I would never use all of them all in one go. I would just go in 50s. Now, the thing is, like, is this a better way of doing it? I don't know, but we've had more success by just feeding stacks of 50 uh, in order to make them gifted. Alternatively, you can try and hunt out star jelly, and I know it does cost a little bit of stuff, but I would kind of recommend if you really do want to try and hunt out those gifted bees, uh, maybe try and make a star jelly or two inside your machine. Um, so you can make this with 100 royal jelly and 3 glitter. I know it's kind of expensive. Alternatively, you can still do the daily rewards. Believe it or not, I got a star jelly from a brown bear quest. I know it's hard to believe, but it happened. So if you just keep questing, the star jelly will come to you. I promise. And also, I think we we're going to save this one for next episode, but just very quickly to finish off the video, in terms of gaining those special items, things like star jelly, micro converters, blue extract, red extract, all that kind of stuff, make sure you keep on top of your daily bosses. So you've got the king beetle and you've got the tunnel bear. I'm probably going to recover this point next episode, but what I like to do quite simply is it really depends on how quickly you can take him down. I'm fortunate because I can take these guys down very quickly. So what I do once again is I just wait in inside the blue HQ. I wait for that baby love token and then I go and grab this and all I'm doing here is I'm quite simply just boosting up my loot luck. So if you are able to take this guy down before your loot luck token runs out, then I would always recommend using loot luck. Boom. We gain ourselves some magic beans, 10 magic beans there, five red extracts, five tickets, blue extracts, all that good stuff. And then what I do is I do exactly the same thing here with the tunnel bear. Um, so yeah, just like a little tip about the tunnel bear, I'm going to go and wait for another baby love just to make sure. And there it is. Boom. So yeah, this really does depend on if you've got a vicious bee and if you've got a high level hive. As I kind of mentioned, yes, I did want to save this one for next episode because it is a little bit more advanced. However, what I like to do is I like to drop in, run a bit forward, let my tokens spawn and then just run into them and kind of just wait. Um, so you do want to get those tokens out initially. It just basically speeds up the time you can take it down. I've waited for my loot luck again and look at all those items. 10 tickets, 1 oil, 20 moon charms, magic beans, micro converters, glitters, enzymes, royal jellies, uh, all that good stuff. And I feel like if you do wait for that loot luck token, it really does increase your drops. Now, completely because this is like the noob version, I know that like some people aren't going to be able to take it down that quickly. I completely get that. If you can't take it down within 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. If you can take it down, try and make sure you do your king beetle. The king beetle spawns every day. The tunnel bear once every two days. So I think that is going to be about it for this video here today. Oh yeah, and don't forget your daily uh, royal jelly here inside. This is every single gifted bee type you've got. You get a free royal jelly, so make sure you hit that. Um, yeah, basically we, uh, I think we finished for this video. So I want to go next time and look way more into 
things like the wind shrine, the windy bee, tornadoes, all that good stuff. But I hope that at least there is one thing that you might have picked up from this video, which is simply going to help you play a little bit more efficiently. It's all about getting into good habits, basically. Uh, and yeah, it's nothing too stressy. It's quite simple. Uh, but if you just get into a bit of a routine, it's really going to help the way that you play Beast Wall. Uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please remember to poke me in that like button. And if you are not yet subscribed, go for it because we do Roblox done fun. But until next time, thank you once again for watching. It's been such a pleasure. As always, thanks. And see ya!